for me, the movie is super strong up until the whole um, Bond gets captured by high fat, thrown into the uh, karate school, and then the whole chase scene where we see J.W. Pepper again. That's like literally in the middle of the movie, too. I think that's like the middle half that of the movie. It just kind of goes like this. It's just like, uh, it's like shoehorned in. Like we need a, a bunch of action right here. Okay, yeah. wait, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, Nance. You didn't like J.W. last time, right? You said that yeah. was like Diamonds Are Forever. You didn't want McCurdy. You and I enjoy him. He's He is yeah. definitively Goofy Bond. Like, J.W. Oh, yeah, no, Peppa yeah, totally. would not exist in today's Bond, right? No. When Bond gets goofy again, as it inevitably will. Can I, uh, can I get a vodka martini shake? Oh, you know what? No. Can I get a vodka and Red Bull pint glass, please? Thank you. <laughs> They might bring back a character like this, but but JW worked for you last time. Mm -hmm. Why is this JW different? It just feels like it just feels very out of place. Like the last movie, like really, really worked with what they were going for. That was that was JW in his in his homestead. That was him in his homestead. But 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 I'm looking at it from like the analytical, like let's analyze the film, like what are the themes, that kind of thing, right? Last movie, it really works because we have black black guy versus white guy right so how do we make it you know again like they even said like why how do we how do we we know that the white guy is going to win so how do we kind of just direct the audience you know we'll put a dude that we can make fun of in the movie and you and i enjoy the hell out of that guy i just don't remember i mean that's again though that's that's superfluous that's like like if you're just watching the movie you don't gather that you have to you that's outside knowledge bleeding in my whole take on jw this time around is it would have been one thing had Bond just gotten into that car and JW was just sitting there. You'd be like, what the f***? But they yeah. at least set they, they him set it up, up that he's there yeah. on vacation. Now, you can say that's coincidence, but again, we live in this crazy world. My honest take on JW this time around is I think he's more fun because now that they've switched him to an ally, mm-hmm. he kind of becomes like our like meta audience. What the hell? I, I argued before that, like, with, with Diamonds Are Forever, I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Everybody in the world suddenly knows who James Bond is. James Bond and, is, and yeah. it was it, yeah. like technically Tiffany Case was part of an evil organization or like part of a criminal organization, but the way they revealed it was with like a James Bond Playboy thing, and it's like you just killed James Bond. Like it's clearly meant to be meta and like self referential. Yeah. Like I used to make this case about zombie movies. Like you have zombie movies where people know what zombies are, and then you have zombie movies slash stories where. People don't know what zombies are. So when, when, when living dead come about, they're like, oh, they don't say, look, a zombie. They say this dead body came back to life. You know, there's a difference. Diegetic means within the universe of the story, within the universe of the movie. Yeah. Non-diegetic is outside of that. The most uh, generally used case of this is diegetic and non-diegetic sound. So like diegetic sound is like any sound that the characters can hear. Within that film universe, that sound that they can hear. S- movie scores or whatever that the audience hears, that's non-diegetic. That's outside of the realm of the story. In Diamonds Are Forever, Bond's reputation is somewhat non-diegetic. You just killed James Bond. Is that who it was? It's like, oh, the audience knows who Bond is because through pop culture, uh, now everybody in the world knows yeah. who Bond is. And that is now bled into Bond's story. Whereas with like Dr. No and literally every other movie. It's um, the agents and the organizations that know. Only all- people who should know who he is know who he is. The man the British will almost certainly use on a mission of this sort would be their agent, James Bond. With this, Scaramanga knows who Bond is because he should, yeah. because they're, 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 um, they're peers. We have so much in common, Mr. Bond. We have so much to discuss, and we will never have this opportunity again. The weapons manufacturer knows who Bond is, because he should, because he lives in that shadow world. An unexpected honor, Mr. Bond. Your reputation precedes you. All of these mm-hmm. people know who Bond is because they should. J.W. Peppa knows who he is because he had a previous run-in. Now, I know you. Oh, no. You're that secret agent. Secret agent? That English secret agent from England. We don't yeah, have a scene yeah. where where like some tourist recognizes Bond, like, aren't you? I saw you on the Today Show. Like that doesn't exist. Yeah. Everybody that who knows Bond should. So he kind of becomes like our meta audience where where he happens to be in the car, which is it's a fun moment where Bond just 
peels out and he's like, what the hell is going on? And then he puts two and two together and he's like, you're chasing somebody. You're chasing somebody. We have this time, boy. Yeah. It's a fun <laughs> yeah. callback to the last movie. He is what makes that chase fun, just like he's what made the chase in the last movie fun. So again, my question to you is, why does he not work in this movie if you loved him so much in the last movie? I think I do like the conflict between the two in the last one. Like, I like the idea of this guy, somebody who is a country bumpkin, essentially, versus a yeah. suave British agent. And they're at each other, like, they're adversaries sort of like he does like bond doesn't know that they're adversaries right like i think that yeah. you have that that chase has dual things going on right like you got bond bond is in his whole world he's dealing with Penanga's on people he's on the run yeah. you're watching it like the audience is watching it at the same time there's this other story also going on that is interconnected with it with jw and he has yeah. a lot of great lines in it and i and like that's the other thing is just i think and it's not that I don't like JW in this movie. I don't like him as much. You know what I mean? Remember Mrs. Bell from the last movie who just was the woman who happened to be in the airplane when he jumped in? Yeah. JW is Mrs. Bell in this movie where he's sitting in the car. He's like, how about a demonstration, That's, boy? Yeah. And Bond gets in. So I assume the script originally just had a Mrs. Bell, just a random person. But instead, they brought back JW and then you have that moment where JW is like, he's like, wait a second. Like he's putting two and two together. The audience is putting two and two that he's putting two and two together. I think that is just heightening the material. Now, if they like, if he had, if he had one more minute in the movie, it would probably be too much, but you have the too scene much, that yeah. sets him up and then you have the scene that pays it off. And, um, uh, and, and he still throws out some fun racist stuff and that's always nice. It's yeah. I, it's personally for me. <laughs> I like the first, first movie a little bit more as far as his stuff. Like I like the Sergeant yeah, Pepper stuff. I'm, I'm a on little the other bit more end of the, the last spectrum, one. I suppose. Like obviously, I you, he, you just he hated rubbed it me all. the wrong way last episode. But in this one, I actually disliked him less. I borderline. I think I maybe even liked him when I first no. saw him. I was like, oh no. And then yep. we get the fun chase yeah. scene, and th that was all fun. 